Robert Mays. I'm the director of sales here, and thank you so much for coming, and please welcome Blaise. For me, this excerpt it brings me back to Tanglewood because every Tanglewood season we close the season with fiddle and nine. And so for me, I, I imagine the lawn and, and the sunny skies and all those people uh, on their blankets. Um, but really, you know, also the cellos, very often we sing next to the, the, the male singers for this piece. And you know, singers, especially for such a big piece, sometimes you, you almost can like count the vibrato, you know, like wow, 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 wow. wow. And so it's just something to keep in mind that it's, it's not, it's not k you know, the articulation. It, it's more, it's rounder because everything is, is sung and sometimes we are with the singers or we imitate the singers and they have sung before we get to, to play this, right? So in, in the articulation of the bow, <laughs> to the articulation. Yeah. Even, 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 even here, you know, I hear. Uh -huh. Same thing here. Legato. Um. singer would sing, would sing, you know, they wouldn't do, you know, search for depth instead of searching for volume. And then when you arrive at the end of that phrase, uh, you can relax a bit. Uh, except the, the last note is always a bit early. Okay. Uh -huh. um, the, the, the bass is a bit better. It's still a bit, um, a bit excited to my, to my taste. I'd, I'd like to feel more space in the sound. Yeah? not to dig too much in the string, I agree. It's great that you have a, a great sound on the bass, but... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, very nice. Because if, 
you're a singer and you're going all out on that note, you don't finish the phrase, right? You need your breath, OK? Afterwards? <laughs> So remember, this is a, a declamatory style, but it's cello and it's a piece with singing everywhere. So even here, <coughs> it's, it's marcato, but um, <coughs> like if you say pa pa, right? It's like um, Staying on the string, can you try to get off a tiny bit? So it's a bit more this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, and remember, just like earlier, we had first notes, um, first note. Okay, same thing, don't rush the end. Uh, a lot of those phrases, it, it feels natural to take a bit of time to sort of close uh, the, the phrase, right? So, um, <laughs> Okay, and when you get to the top, remember to sing. I know I'm talking to you about the, the marcaro and the articulation, but whenever you have long notes, just just you know use them as much as you can. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your color at the end. The end is is it's written poco adagio, right? So um, it's really different tempo, right? Yeah. Technically, I see I see you very often. You get stuck in the in the top half of your bow, which I, I don't like being there. It's it's we have le I have less control. You know, maybe some people are great there. I'm not. So I would try to get back. You know, if you can to the frog, so you, you, it gets a bit easier. And then um, it should still be because it's singing. You know, we should still we need still need to find a balance between the legato and, and the declamatory style, right? So. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't get off the string here. Um. So for example here, come back to the frog. You, you stay here. Same thing here. Mm. Come back here. Uh -huh. okay, 
very good. You know, you were also much more comfortable when you were at the frog, you know. <laughs> so ke keep that in mind, you know, whenever we get stuck here, just use Morbo to get back, but no wait, you know, which you did fine, you know, so we don't hear that, it's you know, but really uh, it's easier to play around here than around here. Um, next one. <laughs> oh, same thing, same thing, you just like, stuck two knives in my heart, you know. <laughs> yes. Very good. So same thing here. Um, don't go off the string. Um. Here, you know, you know, directly dots, uh, but I, I think it can be a bit more marcato here because we're going into fortissimo. It's a class, and we may be nervous and all, but but make sure that the energy is not this, but but more li like this, right? So it's really like a, like a singer, you know. They, they always get the sound behind behind them, you know. Take your time. Um. <laughs> you know, it, obviously, we all know this is a recitativo, right? But we really have to keep that in mind, which means we're more free, you know, than a traditional excerpt, mm -hmm. and we really have to to think like a singer. So, rushing I in that music is, you know, almost never a good idea. Okay, just take take your time. No, nobody's gonna tell you oh, he took too much time there. Okay, next one. Very good. G don't forget again the apogee to arrive, right? first note and this afterwards very legato um. <laughs> this is maybe the only you know cellistic moment <laughs> where it's maybe a singer would not do that but I guess we can allow cellos to do that so um. <laughs> really we won't hear the richness right of the G string <laughs> If you want to show the first note more than the second, first of all, use more bow on the first note, and then uh, the vibrato more important also on the first note. If the vibrato is more important on the second note, the second note sticks out. Okay. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. I think the ending um, can be a little more 
inflammatory because it's the end of this whole cello section, you know. And you're going, everybody on the lawn to go like, wow, cellos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Okay, so you get the idea? Yeah. The, really, the articulation, the way that we articulate with the bow I is, is about thinking like, like a singer. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to hear it's a bow on a cello, I just want to hear a voice, you know? Very nice, very nice. What, what's next? Uh, Oh, nice. <laughs> Sometimes there would be a bit more uh, rhythmical integrity. Okay, so sometimes you're, you're basically playing all the notes and all the rhythms, and uh, but the rhythms are not very clear to me. You know, so I really need to hear each note, and then uh, it's a triplet starting, right? And yeah. a start on on this F. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> Still, wish the F would be a bit more important than the B. Right now, the B is still sticking out a lot. You know, B, pa 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 pa, ya ta ta ta. That's your statement. Not ta 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 ta, ya ta ta ta. Yeah, I'm just curious if if, if you can try my fingering uh, here. Because it, it saves you from crossing one extra string, you know. <laughs> and you're staying in the same position. T t take your time when you shape. So the trick here, you know, is to focus on the second beat. So this way, not only it sets your rhythm, but also for the left hand, you know, you f you focus. You have maybe more pressure on that note, and then you let go. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, and the triplet then a bit a bit more bold. Mm -hmm. And be careful it's not it doesn't rush, right? So when I talk about rhythmical integrity, that's one example. No be pa pa uh -huh. Very good. So now we have an accent on the G sharp. I, I didn't hear it. Okay. No, read it to him. Okay. Uh, nice fingering. I did that when I got my first section position. But I want to hear the crescendo, right? So not too much, I mean nothing at the beginning, and then more at the end, right? You know, if you use all your bow for, for the notes that don't have crescendo, I have no idea how you're going to have a crescendo with, you know, those few inches of bow. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. 
Same thing. Jimmy, you, you have your time slot. We're going to play all the notes. Please don't rush, okay? Uh huh. Okay, so. This one, the last one, has an accent, but it's an eighth note, and before it's a quarter note. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you, if you go play an orchestra audition, you know, you're going to have like, I don't know, a trombone player or, you know, I mean, nothing wrong with trombone player, but somebody who may, you know, not used to that part is going to look at like, oh, he played that eighth note like a quarter note, you know, out. Okay. So don't give them that chance, okay? <laughs> good. Pizzicato is very good. Let's uh, try it A. Okay, very good. See, here's the bow stroke. I see it a bit more brushy. Not too, not too pointy. Yeah, a bit more horizontal than vertical. Second triplets are rushing. You know, because you have 99 people playing with you on stage, and so if you rush, you're gonna go home earlier, and that's not fair. Okay? So really stay in tempo. Uh -huh. tiny bit and, and let the sound clear up a bit um, so we really have a very clean accent okay, okay. because if you stay legato uh, it's, it's not as clear uh, then here um, again I know it stays loud but still the, the, the emphasis is on the first note right so make sure you don't play them okay. and same thing as them Stab here, we're done. But the piece is long. So try to avoid that. Huh? And on the contrary, here you can sing. Finally, we had all of the articulation stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, even those, those triplets, those quarter triplets, or, or rushing. Very good, it's a very good transition to Ponticello. Okay, so I mean, you, you understand the, 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 the characters, the articulation, really important not to rush. I mean, 99% uh, of candidates rush this except, you know, everybody comes on stage and, <coughs> and we don't hear anything. You know. So, really, if it's a person who comes in and plays it clean, is a godsend, really. Um, okay? And, and really make sure, yeah, not, not to rush all those triplets. Okay, very, very steady. You know, I've, I've sat on many committees since I'm at the BSO, and very often you have one guy who just has a pencil and he's tapping the tempo, and 
you know, we're not all like that, but there's always someone like that. Mm -hmm. So once again, don't give them a chance to kick you out. All right. Okay, bravo. Mm -hmm. Audition, definitely don't react to your own mistakes. Okay, didn't happen. Don't show it. Yep. <sighs> I learned to do that at work too. I used to also react all the time. I did something wrong, and then I realized my neighbors don't hear anything. So then I stopped doing it, and they think I'm doing fine. You know. Sure. So it's a good trick to have in your bag. Um, so you know, this this we we play with the horns actually, and so I think it's 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 a good thing to keep in mind to to sort of play like a French horn. You know. Um, <laughs> Right, so it's yep. it's 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 wide, it's large, it's it's not pointy, and you know he has this marking lang getzogen, which means to actually use use some bow. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I, can we try again? Beginning was very good, and when you get here, um, make sure the rhythm is, is very, very even. Okay. So no no rushing, no slowing down either, and especially at the end, um, you're rushing a bit here, so. Um, okay, and a bit different color here. Okay. Uh, beginning from or yeah, let's go from the A sharp. Yeah. yeah, you see, you're taking a bit of time here, um, and that's because you have all that bow to get through again. So use a faster bow speed and, and less pressure. Um, I love your sound from the beginning. I think it, it fits you very well, Alexa. Can it be a bit more tender here? So, li lighter bow and, and lighter left hand too. Okay, not 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 too deep. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, thank you. French horn, you know. Um, <laughs> so every note, da, 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 almost also like if it was a piano, right? Ba, di, da, da, da. The French horn is not gonna go yeah. away like this. I need to, you know. So really take your time, and, and this is the interest of that that phrase. It, it builds up over a long period of time, and so if we if we start going ahead, then we're sort of you know sure. destroying that. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Can you try him? Um, not too diminuendo here because it's poco a poco crescendo for a long time. Mm -hmm. So 
there's no stopping of the bow arm, right? It's always going somewhere. Okay, very good. Now, when we get here, you know, he writes again, gets organ, you know, which means yeah. to, to use the bow arm. <laughs> It's a bit declamatory, but it's not taking too much time, right? Um, yeah. The, the recordings I listened to all. Oh, I'm sure there are many so recordings. Yeah, but but I I, I I feel again that that it's happened also because of, of your bow because you you yeah. need to get through at the same with the same density and same weight on the string. Mm. You have to decide the rhythm, and then you tell the bow what to do to get you where you want to go. Don't let the bow tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty good. Too slow. Yeah, yeah, it's good, but I would use I would use more bow. Still so yeah. use more bow, but less pressure. Yeah. Yeah, but c careful when you get off off that bar. That we have the full full beats, right? Yeah. To, to my taste, the the um, the C double double sharp is a bit early. A bit what? A bit early. Uh, early. Early. Oh yes. Yeah. Sorry. Forgive my accent. <laughs> yeah, you see, even even in your in your mind and in, in your with your body, you're you're doing this because you want to get to the next note. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think you should feel very still. You're not gonna see the French horn do this, right? Head bob every yeah. note, yeah. right? Very good, very very nice ending. So you get the feeling, right? It has to, has to feel very long. You know, I, I wonder if I play just a tiny bit. Um. Right, so it's everything feels very peaceful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's it's very good. I think I think you you got the idea. Okay, good. Uh, good. Sure. And then. Uh,
something very nice. Can I stop you already here? Yes. And, and we, we can go further later. But at the very beginning, you know, I would really use no vibrato. Right, so it starts really from nothing. Um, Careful when you switch strings that you don't transfer the weight here, right? Mm -hmm. small move from the arm. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Yeah, very good. You know, on this one, A real swan on the door. Huh? <laughs> the nice, nice cushion. Uh huh. Okay, very good. Let's skip the pins. So, afterwards, afterwards, really, I mean, as you know, we won't have a huge line. Mm -hmm. Right? So, it needs to be legato for a very, very, very long time. And every note, you know, uh, is 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 declamated but within within the ghetto so um. <laughs> right so very very long phrase and i I stay on the A string. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure what that first thing is. Yeah, I, I felt horrible because I spent, I spent hours, ri hours writing all that sheet music. But I would have written second string if I really <laughs> wanted to go if on you the really second string. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, I'm kidding. I don't feel sure. horrible. But you know, I was like, I thought I, I, I proved everything. So there's no mistake possible. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we can start again and really try to keep always, always going somewhere. And even here. Um, Try to connect. It's, it's technically impossible, sure. but try to hide anything you can so it feels like it's the same, same, same string, you know. I'm sorry. How much vibrato starts with this one? Like well, I, 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 I think it's okay to have some. It's all very good. When you get here, um, it really needs to be a, a different color. Very, very extremely tender. It, sa it says Dolce, actually, but now. So it's articulated, but within the ghetto and within the dynamic.
good, very good, very good. You know, once again here. Um, Here, the connection with the next bin. It's like you know, if you have, if you have, um, if you imagine your fingers are clear mm -hmm. and there's water in them, and you need to transfer the water from one finger to the next, right? You can do a, a brusque move, uh, a brisk, brisk move. We see. Sudden, oh, yes. Okay, yes. Sorry, yeah. we say brusque in French, but yes. Oh. Sudden. So, so um, really keep the same motion. You switch finger, but it's the same motion. Yes. I would be much more, much more careful, much more tender with the way you switch the fingers. And even the way you switch the ball. Um, rounder. Much longer line. Now, when you get to the towards the end, don't slow down too much, though. Okay, so. Um I think once again, it's because I, I put those separate bows, mm. so they take more time for you. Just mm. use a bit less pressure, a bit less weight, so it, it goes faster. You know, but the line was really excellent. Um, now let's go forward. Uh, maybe the, the next line. Do -di -di -um -do -di -do. Here, even though the, ry the rhythm seems more active, we're still legato. So, um. Always, always 
از دیگر بازی کنم بیکفون You know, it's like um, it's like if you're in your car and you have to turn around the streets. And so if there's if there's no snow, yeah, maybe you can do this. But now we have snow these days, so you have to go like this. And so that's what I would do with your bone. Take the time to change the bow. Don't don't be too abrupt. Uh huh. to know is when you get to the, the end of that excerpt yeah. um, in general the music is getting more passionate a, a lot of conductors I mean like Leandre Snetson pushes us forward a lot here so it's something to keep in mind you know <laughs> especially when you arrive here So before it was always this tension, 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 and now suddenly we're allowed to, you know, let go a bit more. Can we try from B? Okay, because yeah, it's still yeah. sort of part of, of the melody, so not too too shy. Sure. Uh, let's do the last few bars. with the car. Right on. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me think for a second. Um, try, try to you leave the bow on the string mm. and uh, and but l let go of a little bit of pressure before you change the bow. So um, if I exaggerate on um, right. Yeah. Okay, but letting pressure off I is okay. But if you reattack the next bow, uh, you know count. my <laughs> advice is for nothing. Yes. see your stick change you know change mm -hmm. angle yeah. so something is happening here <laughs> nothing happens <laughs> that, that's do, let's do it once more and don't worry about the volume just worry about the cleanliness of the change okay. and look look at your stick here and and if it's a game, if, if it, you know, it's not squid games, but, uh, you know, if it moves, you lost, okay? So, I don't want to see it move. Mm. 
you see that little twitch you have when you change the ball? Mm -hmm. already you know so it's just a matter of you know using it wisely so at the beginning you don't need as much of it when it's pianissimo mm -hmm. um, and then really to, to be as legato as possible I mean that's the reason an extra like that is, is, is on the list right it's just to see if people can play legato or not yeah. okay yeah. great bravo awesome. thank you <laughs> Very good. So, you know, it, the, the whole excerpt is marcato. Marcato fortissimo. Uh, or, I mean, for it later, but it really needs a lot of energy. <laughs> right? Really, really, you know, I think maybe the brass is playing with us has to be really, really, really full of character. Okay, and, and, and those kind of excerpts in Strauss, sound-wise, you can't be too light with the bow. It has to be really have a strong core to the sound. Okay? Very good. I, I like the sound, and I like most of your fingerings. I still think here, uh, I think, yeah, I would still stay, you know, up on the A string. It's not too hard, and I, I, I keep going back here. Uh, but you know, because it's really important that, that it projects. It has to project. It's, it's, the cellos have to be heard, mm -hmm. and so even though, you know, we always have to, to find uh, when it's 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 okay to to take a safe fingering and when it's taking away from the music. And in that case, I think it, it just sounds sounds too safe. You know, so take a chance. Yeah, very good, very good. It's very good. I, I love you know, and, and you're nailing everything. It's it's awesome. Yes. Uh, so when when you get to you know, it's still forty, right? I mean, there's a small, you know, before, but then, and even those triplets, it's not, it's very articulate, even within the slur. Okay, so the left hand, very, very articulate. Yeah, you know, I figured maybe it's like easier if I, if I put the book in front of you, because then we're, you know, we don't see the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is very good, and I like that now. You know, it's really staying, staying marcado. That, that's why here, you know, um, doesn't matter that it's, in har it's a harmonic because 
we care more about the rhythm than it's not like we care about the tone in the matter before. Here it's just about rhythm, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And as you see, most of my fingerings after on the shoulder line, mm -hmm. those are pretty safe. They stay in position, mm -hmm. but you know th they work, and it's not it's not the main the main theme here. So it's it's all right. Mm -hmm. um, let's go maybe from from seventeen the last last two lines. Seventeen. Uh huh. to mention there's an immersion in there's a few bars before where you started right mm -hmm. so that means it keeps getting faster mm -hmm. um, then at 17 it, it was still a bit shy I know you're you're figuring out you know maybe new fingerings and new bowing so it's all very confusing but mm -hmm. still this this strong chord to sound right really really strong Very good. So you know, make sure that you still have the density, even if you're here in the bow, that you still have density in your sound. Know that it goes away. Okay, is that very good? And then earlier, um, with lots of character also. Do de go down, not polite. good so here is tricky to really hear every note right so really articulate with the left hand and, and don't rush so you really get to hear the rhythm clearly uh, but speaking of rushing you can rush the end the end says accelerando so there you can go for it okay uh, can we do the last last two lines again I do like my finger in here because um, that really it's very easy to be clear on the same string when we're switching strings it's, it's sort of it's a bit more fluid right so um, and also in your head it's easier to think you know I aim for that first finger and then I'm all set and then I get to the next thing okay uh, actually the whole almost the whole last line is one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four so and the other thing I want to mention is even though I'm asking you to play louder I know uh, that you know the fortissimo is different. <laughs> that that should be more than that. Uh, <laughs> this really, really should be more powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. one one last time. of technical advice you know uh, how to play loud and not tire yourself and not force I is to really try to restrain yourself from using your, your forearm use only the the back of your arm right so you feel the weight you see I'm pulling here I'm not doing this uh -huh. Exactly, because sometimes it's hard to, to, to grasp the, <laughs> the idea. Yeah, yeah. But this is this is much less tiring because you know sometimes I explain and then 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 people try to force because mm -hmm. you know they think that's how you make a big sound. No, it's really use use only this this part of your arm and then it actually feels very comfortable. Right. You know, because if, if you have an orchestra job someday and you play those pieces, you know, four times a week plus rehearsal and maybe the program the week after it just as hard and you know you can you could hurt yourself, you know, if, if you're forcing. Mm -hmm. So this is something you can keep in mind, you know, anytime you have an excerpt that's uh, asking for power, mm -hmm. 
you know, or even the, you know, it's powerful, but it's easy. It's not, you know, okay? Very good. You're you fixing them pretty fast. Thank, Thank you. you. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, bravo, beautiful, beautiful. You know, I, I always feel, <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I always feel for me those, those mother melodies, they're so somehow uncomfortable to play. Even now when I play, when you have a cello section tune, I, it always feels a bit like walking on eggshells. Um, but th the main quality I'm looking for in a, in, in a mother melody like this one is, is it should have a lot of charm, a lot of charm, a lot of elegance. And a really, really warm, warm color. Um, and it should sound easy, even though it's, you know, may not be easy, you know. But so um, I would even take the time. Um, It's really warm color. I probably did the reverse of my own bowings, but you know, really try to always have very legato, very legato, and and very warm. Very good. So, you know, I, I, I don't really, I, I'm not a dictator with, with fingerings, but um, where sempre piano is possible, you know, until much later, until the, the teens in, the, yeah. in, the, in, the, in that excerpt. Mm -hmm. So I would really try to stay on the D string, the you know, until... Mm -hmm. uh, and here you can move to the A string. But, uh, so... Just stay there. Okay, 
Okay. Very good. So here, you know, we have um, we're, we're piano subido here. Um, and then crescendo here. Um, right? So this needs to be really, really big. So I think it's okay to, to split up the slur here. Here, because we're trying to get loud, I would stay on the A string. You know, so. Because you have this little carrot on the, on the F, F flat. Okay? And another detail I want to mention in, in, in Mahler, you know, just like we did, you know, and took time also here. You know, take your time for the shift. It's part of the charm, really, that's. that's very unique to Mahler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I have a bigger contrast? So really stay committed to the louder dynamic mm -hmm. until the end of the bar and then ch change back. So. Don't 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 let go of, of your arm at the end. Um, stay stay with the same same um, same density on, on the bow stick than, than before. Okay. Don't if you let go of the arm, you lose sound. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Much better. So same thing here. Um. <laughs> Has to be a very abrupt change. Every time we have an abrupt change, it's it's more convincing if we make sure we almost overdo before the crescendo. You know, so we have the contrast. Okay. It's like uh, Instagram. You know, you have the contrast option. In Instagram. You know. Yeah. So the. The uh, same same thing here, you know. If you want to really have the contrast, more more contrast. Too early, too early. Your your G sounds like it's already piano. So here he, he, he even writes the glissando, so we know we have to take time in those shifts. You know, so... Um, really take time, and I would, I would open up the vibrato a bit more on the first note. Right, so it's not the same vibrato. So here, also, again, we want, we want this, this contrast, crescendo piano subito, and it's not easy. You know, this time we're up on. So, which means here, um, unlike earlier when I was asking you to keep the weight on the stick, here you have to take it off, right? Because if you keep it, you're going to stay it out. So, um,
Okay, very good. So now I, I'd love to hear it one more time now that we went a bit through the, through the kinks of the excerpt mm -hmm. and really a bit more with the, the feeling of being in three. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice flow. Okay, very nice. I like the flow a, a lot more. Okay, some of the, the dynamics and this and those could still be more. Yeah. Okay, but I think it's it's very important. I, I was actually surprised that that there are so few orchestras with the Mahler excerpt on the list, and yet it's such a huge part mm -hmm. of the repertoire. So that's why I put this one on, on our list mm -hmm. for the next audition because it's really it's a, it's a, it has a singing quality, mm -hmm. but it's not Brahms, it's not Tchaikovsky, it's you know it's Mahler, right? <laughs> okay, bravo. <laughs> Bravo, bravo. That's definitely one of the hardest, you know, excerpts. I even playing it in orchestra it's it's really difficult. Um, you know, it was pretty smooth. Obviously the goal is to be smooth at the beginning with all those shifts. 
Um, only when you get go to the top. Um, in those notes, I heard a bit more separation. You know, uh, also in the vibrato, mm -hmm. which is another thing I noticed. Sometimes the vibrato starts and stops between each note, right. and so if you can keep it flowing, you know. Um, I mean, here we don't really need much vibrato. Um, <laughs> Here I would stay in one ball. Oh. And here I change color. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good, but I guess I have a pretty good fingering because you know I still hear. That's what we hear a lot in auditions. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you do that, I, I don't, I, I don't do it because I can't. But you know, <laughs> you have to find a way to hide those, those shifts. Okay. It's pretty good. Just out of curiosity, can you, you can you try my fingering? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, yeah. Do you stretch the one to four? I stretch the one to four. Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that hard? I don't know. I I do it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's doable. It's pretty good. I, th I think you'll, you'll get the hang of it. I mean, the, the, the thinking behind it is, you know, you have one position, then another one, and then a third one. Uh -huh. Most fingerings people do have like five changes, yeah. six changes, mm -hmm. which is make, makes life really complicated. Right. You know. It's very good. Even here, I think maybe there's something in the boat here. Yeah. Really one motion, right? You know, I see a bit your hand at each bow string change. It's doing a little thing like this. Nothing, just like a pendulum. Better. Very good. And so one nice trick to think about here um, is to really sing out that top note. The E flat and then so it's soft here. So it's different color on the E natural. E natural. Very nice. So that note, y you're doing fine at least with the dynamics because a lot of people are tempted to play loud when they get here. But also with the vibrato, I sing um, a bit calmer, you know, I think. You know. So here I really like the idea of, of shifting, of, of swearing and shifting, you know, from the, the upbeat, you know. Um. I think it's more vocal, and it's a requiem in the a choir, so it's, you know. Okay. The thing is that you know we have this, this carrot with this accent on the F, uh, and that's actually helpful. So you can you have this accent on the F, and then no accent on the note afterwards, right? Because mm -hmm. what we do want to avoid is right. yeah, 
Can I get a bit more bow speed on? Yeah, that was maybe a bit much, but you know. Yeah, so even here in the vibrato, I exaggerate, but... Yeah, basically, if you think about starting your vibrato slower, okay. it, will, it will be easier to be seamless. If, if we start a vibrato fast, then we have to stay fast all the time if you want it to, to not show up, right? Just to point out, I mean, you do it a bit, but I'm not sure if it's by choice or if it just happens. But the first phrase is dolce, the second one is poco marcato, the third one is più marcato. So we really need to hear that, okay? So the first one is the sim simple. There's a tiny bit marcato. And the last one more. And, and make sure it's always flowing, because I think we may also be a tiny bit slow now. Okay. Uh, I know with Andres Nelson, it's really fast. Yeah. You know, which, I mean, anyway, it's good, you're done sooner, but <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> You can do more marcato with the, with the bow. <laughs> I mean, usually uh, uh, portato is, is really forbidden where I work. But here, I think, here you can do a bit, I think. You know, it's like in the mother of your own, you know. This one does not have a hairpin, right? So I was going to say earlier, you could have done more Aki Dynamics, okay. you know, more, more hairpin. And the last one really... Uh, <laughs> soft all the way, no, no crescendo. Mm -hmm. 
So you, your bow is stopping at a tiny bit. <laughs> I think you just used a bit too much at the beginning. So the okay, but very good. It's quite good. That's a very, very hard one. With Strauss, Trau I feel like there's always a, a, a whip in the in the sound, uh, sort of sort of you know majesty in the character, and so the one thing I, and you were doing fine, but the one thing I hear a lot is is, is this except plays played very aggressively, and I, I think it's the opposite. You know, I think it's it's, it's very grand, but not aggressive. You know, <laughs> and those those three plays da 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 rhythmically has to be very Almost, almost held back, mm -hmm. right? So. <laughs> and every time we have, and we're changing bow, let's try not to show it, okay. right? Uh, accents in the one, two, third, three, four, fifth bar, we have those accents, right? <laughs> but if before we play, then we don't see the difference, right? right? So when there's no accent, no accent, okay? <laughs> can, can the beginning be a bit more, um, a bit deeper? Uh -huh. I know we, we maybe we, we may put more weight on the on the B, but if we keep it on the string, the next A is going to be accented. So I I sort of you know I lift the weight here, so I have my have my B flat, and then I lift. ideas. Uh, I wouldn't try to get off the string. Just stay on the string. You know, use very little bow. 
And then another short, right? Just sixteenths. Okay. Now, still from the beginning of the excerpt, I feel like sometimes you, you get a bit soft. So I know, I know maybe I, I'm 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 softening you by asking for l for less you know less edges, but still the dynamic is forty. Okay. Right? Can we try again the beginning? sing out. Okay. Yeah, don't forget the connection. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, here I'm pretty sure Stay together. Huh? Same thing here. Right. Which means when we have those small notes, the small motion when we're at the tip. Just no need to, to do all this. Very good. So uh, I'll just, uh, I think maybe you did it, but you know, th that fingering and that 19, I'm just pointing it out for people, you know, looking <laughs> to stay in the same position, which is much easier <laughs> to play this after. Because I find that going back and then going back up again is really mm. abrupt. Uh, now when we have the trills. <laughs> very clear, very neat ending to each of them, right? Yeah. And then the pizzicatos are 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there a way to have less of a, you know, less of an ending? Get off the string a bit faster. Okay. okay. Good. Yeah, so here. Um, Very neat rhythm, very articulated in the left hand, but within legato. Okay. Right. Yeah, and no rushing. They're still rushing. All those sixteenths want to go home. <laughs> Thank you.
get your um, I would say um, all those first notes of the bar are sort of like goal posts, you know, on your way to the top. Uh, until you get here, okay. right? Okay, so you, 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 get, you get the idea, right? It's really the, the, the character is actually very steady. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not frantic or it's, it's technically hard, but it has to just sing. Right. So whenever you have long notes, just sing them out. Okay? Very good. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> um, why did you decide to write this book? So, um, originally, this book it sort of started as a joke, like some colleague at work said, you know, as soon as I got the principal position, oh, yeah, now you can write a book on excerpts. And I was like, oh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and, and I, I don't really claim to be a, an orchestral excerpt, you know, expert. Um, but then I think when the pandemic happened, uh, I was in France, I was not working at BSO, I was like, I have all this time. I felt there's actually a need, uh, a need for, you know, a book like this that concentrate all the information, not just uh, how to play the excerpts, which a lot of the old books didn't do. They just gave you the borings and fingerings, and then here you go, figure it out yourself. So I want to give some more tips on, on that front. And then also, I felt a lot of, 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 of young cellists are not necessarily preparing the event of the audition. Uh, so they practice the music a lot, and then they arrive at the audition, and, and, and they're a bit frazzled because they didn't prepare that part. And so I really want, you know, because a lot of them are so talented to, to arrive at the audition, you know, being more ready, you know, uh, to to experience that event because if you think about sports people, you know, no swimmer is going to arrive at the swimming pool having never swam or never done a competition. You know, so you're not going to arrive at the Olympics not having done all those meets before. You know, and so I, I think I, I wish you know there was a stronger approach on that front. Even in music school and conservatories, you know, I know it at Juilliard there's a um, performance psychology. Uh, faculty and I, I think every school should have that because we're we're performers and I feel like that's something I learned almost after I had drawn BSO I had to figure out you know how to be on stage and how to enjoy it and all that stuff so I'm really hoping you know I, I don't have a hundred pages of text but I'm hoping you know the 20 30 pages I, I, I throw at you with all those concepts can just you know raise some questions that maybe you'll find interesting to to improve on that front when you play an audition, uh, nerves come into play a lot, and I, I think one thing people struggle with is being in a different acoustic, say Symphony Hall or Avery Fisher or something like that. Do you have any advice for cellists auditioning when they get to that hall and they sound differently than, you know, maybe in their practice room? Well, I mean, my advice is always not to change what you're doing. So. Um, I feel very lucky because I took all my auditions at Symphony Hall and I, I remember my first audition, I was like, wow, I sound amazing because it's a great <laughs> hall, you know. I know some people may take auditions, maybe it's something more modern where it's drier and they feel like they're struggling to get the sound out. But then if you're forcing it, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like it's forced and everybody is on the same boat, you know. Um, so I, my advice is really to stick, really stick to your game plan and play like you're used to play. Um, and the, the committee is always aware of the acoustic. Uh, yeah. I read briefly that um, you said that you did t four total auditions and you won both on your second try, basically. Um, so on your first tries, how, what were your emotions like coming out of those auditions? Oh, um, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I was particularly upset. Uh, I guess I always feel a bit of detachment from, from the result or from the committee, you know. Um, I mean, the first audition I took, and by the way, the reason my book comes out on February 2, 2022 is because I always win things on two. So, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> um, but yes, the, f the first audition I took was a bit, bit by chance to see how it goes. Um, so I don't think I was particularly upset it didn't, you know, work out, you know, and then it worked the next time, so it was okay. Um, principal audition, uh, frankly, I, I thought I played also pretty well, so I, I didn't feel like I had to beat myself up. Um, I, I think, you know, it's, it's important to to take all experiences as positively as you can. So, you know, I've also done international competitions where, you know, I didn't get to the final or I didn't win a prize. And I mean, does that mean yeah, that you're a horrible musician or that you should quit show or no, you know, it's it depends who else is playing like any competition, you know, uh, it depends who's on the jury or on the committee if it's an audition. So I wouldn't overreact to to results and so many people like I'm I'm sort of lucky actually that I'm winning things on the second time. A lot of my, you know, a lot of my illustrious colleagues, some of the principals in the BSO, have tried 30 times for a principal job, and and now they have this big job and people think like, oh, it was so easy for them. But no, no, they had trial and error. It was a long road. Um, so I, it's I think it's part of the process. But I think the point of that book is instead of having to do 30 auditions to figure out the process, try to get a head start. <laughs> So you know what's what's waiting for you out there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what would you consider maybe the top three hardest excerpts, the ones that get people eliminated fastest? <laughs> um, so you're asking for the final of the next audition, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, I do think Verdi is really tricky. Uh, I think it's very, very tricky. Um, you know, all the all the Strauss excerpts are, are hard because they're technically hard. Um, but there's not necessarily one thing that everybody struggles with. It's everybody has their strengths and weaknesses, and so I guess you know. Very often, you know, somebody tells me like, "Oh, I, of course I didn't get it because I missed that note." You know, and it's never the reason. Never. Like I missed notes in all my auditions, and they still hired me. Um, so it's usually a question of style or something like that. So maybe like you're gonna nail all the Strauss excerpts and then you come to, to WC and you can't play it like it's French music, you know? So it's hard to really pinpoint what's, what's hardest, but probably Verdi is the top of my, top of my own list. Yeah, it says. So when you say you missed notes, could you be <laughs> more specific? <laughs> <laughs> did you like play a little sharp or did you just totally miss it? I, don't really that. I remember my first audition, there was a note, it was probably Don Juan that I played too short. And so Joel's behind the screen was like, can you please play the A longer? And so I played longer. Um, you know, I don't know if it's something I missed in practice or it was a, a brain fart on the day. Um, but you know, things happen and it's not, you know, for example, you know, you, you, you play, uh, you play Don Juan and then, you know, ba -ba -da -da and you miss the top note. It doesn't mean someone is going to cross your name because you missed that note, but, but if you played all the rest with character, with good tone, with style, with beautiful sound, you know, of, of, of course, I mean, we're, we're all human beings. We've been auditionists too. We haven't been perfect, you know, most of us. Um, so the, the committee is actually pretty understanding. Um, but I can't remember the details of what I missed. This one thing you learn with time also is to let go of the mistakes. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for each of your auditions, um, when it came time to warm up right before, did you have a certain way of going about that each time that you had in mind or, or what your advice would be on handling that last warm up? Um, I feel like warming up, I, I need maybe 20 minutes. Um, I mean, I. You know, I wouldn't give you advice from my first auditions because I was so young and sort of unconscious that I just played and fun, chill audition, you know. Um, what I learned through through my time at the BSO and through my auditions, and by the time I took, you know, the, the audition that landed me the principal job is when I arrived for that audition day, I, I felt like the job was done, you know. I, it almost felt like I had nothing else to do. I had prepared. You know, I had done everything I could. I knew uh, there was no way I was taking that audition ever again. Twice was enough. So I came, I was relaxed. I just tried to save my energy for the playing rounds um, and then relax in between the rounds. Uh, but I was, I, was, I was sort of already at peace with the result, whatever, whatever happens, you know. 
I was actually more ready to lose than to win, you know, frankly. So, yeah. whatever really winning means, but yeah. The four auditions, uh, how else did you prepare? Did you have mock auditions with your other colleagues? Did you just, did you record yourself? How much? Did you video record yourself? But yeah, I record myself a lot, and I, I, I believe the recording process is, is a lot like an audition, because you know, you have your machine, and then you press record, and then you have to deliver, you know. And for me, I think I did that a lot. I had, I probably still have on my phone like hundreds of, of you know, voice memos or practice tapes, and, and then you listen again, and you see maybe there was something you thought you were doing that doesn't come across, and then you can do it again and correct it, and actually, I have a lot of, of friends who have like really you know high-tech recording devices and I actually believe it's better to do it with your iPhone because if it doesn't come across the iPhone maybe it won't come across in the audition you know whereas if you always have like high-tech stuff right on your cello it will pick up the smaller things and you know um, but yeah I did the recording I did the mock audition for friends you know I I mean of course I was lucky I could you know use the hall uh, when I wanted uh, but you know I I played in practice rooms at Symphony Hall I played in the living room with a dog walking around and the kid running around. And, and so all that also teaches you about this acoustic thing, you know, that you're playing in different setting. And then you arrive at Symphony Hall and you play with whatever you have there, which is actually pretty good. Um, but you're used to that change of, of scenery. And, and, uh, and also sometimes if you have questions about, you know, how, how to play a specific excerpt, sometimes I had like contradictory feedback from, from friends. And most of the time, I ended up going with what I wanted to do first because that's what sounded true. Um, so it's also very important on, on during the whole process to really believe in what you have to offer. And they choose you, they don't choose you. It doesn't matter. It's easy to say, but really, you you do your your process, your game plan, and and whatever happens happens. Could you talk a little bit about dynamics? And are there any differences between playing in a section and then playing that same excerpt? in an audition in terms of dynamics? Well, I think you, you can exaggerate in audition uh, settings. For example, I know the, the, the Brahms piano concerto solo, when I played in the audition, I made a point when it comes back to be, you know, really pianissimo, which is written pianissimo first time is, or the first time is mezzo piano. I mean, there's a difference. The second time is softer. Um, so in the audition, I made a point to really show that difference. Um, realistically, in performance, it's a bit different because I still have to, to project. Um, but I think, yeah, you want to, to show how well you know your dynamics, you know. People are very happy behind the screen to really hear the differences. Um, I, I don't think it's a difference for a section or for a um, principal job. I actually had some feedback, you know, uh, from colleagues after my first principal audition, like, oh, you didn't do enough dynamics, you know. I said, okay. I will I'll work on that, you know, and, and um, so, th you know, people want that for any, any kind of player. And actually, if you're, um, if, if you're playing loud all the time, it's not really that interesting, you know, musically. So. Let's give a quick follow-up to that. Why do you think Bach continues to be uh, asked for on auditions? Now you're, you're going to get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. Well, I mean, you know, we, I mean, for example, we had it on our assistant cello audition. And it was interesting just for the style, just to see how people play it. Um, I, I, I don't think I'll ever put it on the section audition um, because once again, it's, and you know, maybe there was a way of playing Bach 50 years ago where it made sense to judge someone's legato or articulation or, or tone from a Bach piece. But now what if someone likes to play Bach, you know, full Baroque mode and they come in and, and then they don't hold a note on, and, and it's not, teachers who teach two different ways to play one for audition and one for concert. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's a lot of work. So maybe it would be easier, maybe it would be easier if the committee figured out a, a, a smarter way maybe to, to use that. Um, but for me, it's, it's more about the concerto and, and the excerpts, really. Yeah. Do you think that um, actually video selection would work in the early stages? I think it would. You know, I when I was in Paris, I, I did the jury for the entrance exam at the conservatoire, and they had to do the first round, you know, by video. I, I think we made the right choices. I mean live yeah, yeah, or, or live stream, you know. But even video, frankly, it works, you know. Um, and all the doubts I had when I 
when I heard videos, I was wondering like, oh, maybe this person actually doesn't project. When that person passed to the next round, I heard them live, it was confirmed. So I, I think you do hear a lot by video. The, the only question is that we have this row of the screen that you know, the goal is you never know who's there. So then if we have a video, we sort of know. But you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping maybe these times are a bit different and we don't have to worry about as many things as before. But you know, uh, because I, I do think video, you, I mean, you see a bit more about the players than than the, than, the, than the tape audio than audio tape. So, so it's a big topic. But I think I think we could do better. I'm sure. Yeah. In, in one of the excerpts, you, you mentioned that the trombonist might be listening, and, and it's it's a quarter note, and you played it as an eighth note. Mm -hmm. and, and you were just talking about the audition committee, and maybe six people voted, and seven, you know, so. Does the principal cellist, the, the vote that you have, does that carry any more weight than anyone else on the, no. No. Why so do it's I get just the conductor yeah. that has more? Yeah, now you wondered why I got that job, right? Because <laughs> 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 no power. No, it's the same. Like if, you know, we're gonna have this cello audition, if there's a, a violinist on that committee, he has, or he or she has just as much weight as I do. I mean, th the only change could be if there's a discussion, but usually most orchestras try to steer away from that. Which is another thing, you know, maybe sometimes discussion would actually solve something, but because there's a quest for fairness, we try to avoid discussing, so then maybe if we're off one vote, that's it, you know, and, and that's a bit cruel, but that's, that's, that's really how it is. I mean, in Boston, you, you need a certain number of votes to qualify, and then once you're qualified, it's the, the music director's decision to give you the job or not. So ultimately, it's, it's his decision. Um, but it's actually easier now than when our connection was not involved in the votes. You needed more votes to, to win the job. So it's actually easier now to get in the VSO, believe it or not. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there any advice that you give specifically for video auditions? Yes, it's all in the book. <laughs> 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 we should have done a book reading, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in that case, of course, please record with high quality material. Uh, not too loud, not too soft, not a bathroom acoustic, not a, a super dry acoustic. Uh, please have the tracks in order. Please have a CD that plays every audition. There's a CD that doesn't play in the player. You know, we try all the machines. We desperately try to listen to the candidate and we can't. So check what you're sending, really. Um, so take the tape very, very seriously because like you say, it's, it's, it's often the only way to get into the audition. So it's a, it's a big part of the process. Um, as, as everyone knows, the audition process isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And a lot of frustration happens when uh, a lot of people need to like, fly out to, a, to to take an audition and they waste a lot of money and they don't mm -hmm. end up getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. And another one is that um, there might be like three open spots, but sometimes, for whatever reason, none of them get a fill. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, have, have you personally like, ever thought about like how to reform the audition Well, I mean, I'm, I know it's a hot topic these days. Um, I, I'm sure there are ways to make it better. I would be all out for having more. I mean, I know we have the whole screen system, but having more video selection. Uh, uh, because I agree, you know, most of the people who come for an audition are, are actually not going to get very far. Um, so I wish they didn't have to waste that money, you know, for the audition. Um, I mean, there, there are things with the process, of course, that could be better. Um, you always have very good people who get kicked out in the first round. You know, somehow they, they don't, they don't really stick out in that round. And but you know, things things happen. Usually, pe I, I think usually people find their way sooner or later. Uh, like, am I mad that I didn't get, you know, hired the first time in each audition? Really, no. Like, you know, I came again, and then then they 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 took me. So. Um, I do think we could have now with the, the technology now, we could have easily more pre-selection ahead of time, spend more time with the really qualified candidates um, uh, because that's often what happens and what's frustrating in audition is we have huge days. So the committee you know, is finishing at 10 p.m. exhausted, you know, and, and our brains are not functioning right anymore. You know? So it's, it's not fair either to the, to the auditionees or to us. You know, to to be in that kind of state. I mean, the one thing I have been thinking, though, when, when, when those debates come up about how to make the process better is, is, is also being ready for the audition on the, 
on the auditioning side. So I think that's also the point of the book is, yeah, the, pr the process is hard and it's maybe sometimes it seems unfair, but did you really prepare? You know, and I, I'm serious, you know, and I heard that a lot from my, from my, you know, I was talking with Ed Barker once, he told, he told that to me that he feels, you know, often people are so underprepared and, and they're surprised they don't, they don't, you know, go further in the audition. But like, you know, you're seeing the book, I talk about, you know, what you eat, if you exercise, you know, you know, you know if, if you get used to, to playing like an audition even when it's at home, if you try, try to get nervous at home so to you can see if you can perform in that condition. I, I don't think uh, that many people are doing all that stuff. Um, I know I was not doing it when I was doing competitions and I'm sure there were some kids doing it who did better than me, you know. All the friends who won competitions when I was doing that stuff, they knew everything they were doing. They knew like which place of the ball they were going to be in, which ball speed, what kind of rebuttal, which speed, how long, what's the shape, they know everything, you know. I was not preparing that hardcore and so of course they were winning because they were ready. So. That's one thing really I hope that book is going to do, is help people get ready so they can get through that process. And I mean, first of all, communities of human beings, right? So you have, you know, let's say 10 people. Uh, they may all have different opinions on what they want, you know? Um, so sometimes it's just pure mathematics, like it doesn't, doesn't work out. Like I, I don't know the numbers for my, you know, first principal audition. Who knows, maybe, you know, maybe I needed seven votes to qualify and then I got six and that was it. You know, so the result looks like a failed audition, but actually it was pretty close. And I think that happens quite often. Um, and sometimes the qualities that get you to the last round, which usually are cleanliness, like good intonation, good rhythm, it's not enough to get the actual job. People want artists. So that's where I say sometimes a, a very great musician, you maybe will really have screwed up that day and not played well the first round, gets kicked out, and then they're not in the final. So it happens. Like there, are, I think there are human elements on both sides that that mean that there's no success at the end. It's, it's as frustrating for the committee, if not more frustrating, as it is for the players, really. Um, but that's why my my opinion would be to have a stronger preselection before, um, so people don't waste their their money, and, and we can spend more time with the people who are interesting to us. Yeah. But I, I I think it, it would have to be. I wish it would be a countrywide plan, you know, because if one orchestra does it one way, then it's, it's very confusing, you know. Even, even our, our tape list, you know, uh, for auditions is, is defined by Ixom. So we have to follow that list, you know. It's, so we need a, a wide, widespread rules if we want to change things, but I'm up to having a bunch of, of orchestra players here and talk about it, yeah. <laughs>